Hey guys, welcome to Baverstock family. Today is a really important day. Um, one of the scariest days of my life. I'm going to um, collect Tanisha from the funeral directors. And um, I'm gonna bring you guys with me. Um, I'm scared, man. Like, it's like, I don't even know how to feel. I don't know what's worse. Um, the funeral or collecting her ashes. I mean, last time she was at home was the 30th of January. And to bring her back in a box, her whole beautiful self, Ashes. Prepare just, to turn right. It's just something else. I'm on my own, but I'm with you guys, so it's a hard, hard one. Please and turn right in 400 yards. This bloody sand nav. Turn it down. The woman's still speaking. Turn right. How's this woman still speaking when I've turned this down? Right. One second, guys. Prepare to turn left. What? I don't even know how to turn it off. But anyway, um, I can't even register uh, Tanisha's death. Please turn left in 200 yards. Um, because um, they can't issue me a death certificate. Now and, turn and left. And um, reason for, you know. Prepare to turn left. Oh, this woman's winding me up. Guys, one second. Right, guys, I managed to turn the uh, annoying woman down. Please turn left. Please turn right. I couldn't even, I can't even get my train of thought, man. So, as I was saying, no mother or father, parent, should ever have to experience bringing their child home in a box, man. Just something else. And for all of those that have lost a child, my heart goes out to you all, man, because this is some hard shit, boy. Hard. And you know what, as well? Normally, by this point, you can kind of get on grieving and, and just kind of um, try and get on with your life as much as you can. But this is just the beginning for me. I don't know if you're all aware. I have, there's an inquest. Her death is going to inquest. So this is just the very beginning and that poor little girl Tanisha there's no words there's absolutely no words to describe this situation it's pure tragic ah oh, great you know when you see um what's them birds not mockingbirds uh when you see two one for luck, bad luck, two for joy, three for whatever, four for, I don't know. I just see one. Great. Great. That's all I need. That's great. One. What are them birds called? Comment below, guys, because I can't even remember. Oh, come on. I need to see two now. I need a bit of luck. Anyway, um, I'll probably run down a pig or something now, running out of the field. And also... You know what? Let's jump off this morbid talk for a minute. I'm going to tell you guys a little story because uh, I don't know if you've noticed, when I'm driving, I seem to tell my little stories and I just take my mind off things for a little bit. Um, okay, no offence to cyclists because I know everyone has to get about in that, but pff, some of them cyclists take the piss. I nearly crashed twice in the space of three days. I'll tell you, um, I'm driving, minding my own business, there's a cyclist in the road, okay, lovely, but the cyclist is not nowhere near the pavement, kind of like in the middle, like what are you, a lorry or something, so I'm there dribbling behind it, being patient, and um, I'm following it for a good, I don't know, it seemed like 10 minutes. Oh, I'm thinking, no, 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 no. Just move over onto the pavement. Like, this is just, what? I've got places to be. So, 
I thought, you know what, I'm causing traffic, so I overtake. As I go to overtake the cyclist, <laughs> a car comes the other way. I nearly had a head on crash over the cyclist, man. Then, there was another one. Oh man, I didn't even want to overtake that one. But please, cyclist, man, move over to the curb or get on the pavement. Because it's like, you're going to cause an accident. And then today, <laughs> oh, I am coming back from the school run. And uh, there's another cyclist, but it's on the opposite side of the road. And um, there's a car overtaking it. It nearly hit me. It nearly freaking crashed into me. I couldn't even believe it. I couldn't even believe it. So, cyclists, if you're listening, you're bloody dangerous, man. Get on the pavement. <sighs> so anyway, yeah, I got that off my chest. So I'm just um, hoping I don't see any right now because um, I'm, I, I get road rage sometimes. I try really hard, but <sighs> cyclists, man. Comment below if um, anyone's experienced the same thing. <sighs> right, guys, I'm here. Um, right. I have a, guys... Um, the ashes, I can't get over how heavy the casket is. It's like really, really heavy. I wasn't expecting it to be heavy like that. Um, Tanisha loved her YouTube. And Tanisha, you're here doing YouTube with us again. Right, guys, I'm back home with Tanisha, where she belongs. <sighs> what a journey that was but yeah she's home and it's nothing there's no words guys right about now but I'm just going to continue to get justice for her because really and truly she shouldn't be in that box at all um her three-year-old sister yesterday said to me, Mummy, Tanisha's in a star, isn't she? I said, yes, yeah, she is, darling. Is she on the moon as well? I said, yes, darling, she's looking down at you. And uh, she, she was like, Tanisha's dead. I said, yes, yeah, she died, darling. You know, when they're that age, I don't understand. And um, Now, the other hurdle I've stumbled across, how do I explain to them the casket, especially the younger ones, because I've told them she's a star and an angel and stuff like that. I can't then say, oh, Tanisha's ashes in the casket, because it just confused their heads and stuff, you know? So now I've got to sit and think what I'm going to say to them. Um, what's in the box? Um, and that's a really difficult one. Because the last thing I want to do is confuse them. I don't know, guys. I'm thinking to say it's her coffin and um, her clothes and stuff like that. That's what's in the box. That's why we're cherishing it so much. And then let them carry on thinking that she's a star, looking down at them and stuff like that. Maybe that's the best way. Because if I say Tanisha's ashes and then explain... Then they'll be like, but mummy, you said she was in the star, she was in the sky. It was just confusing to, to their heads. So I think that's the best thing I'm going to say to them. Oh, guys, it's difficult, really difficult trying to do what's best for everybody and their minds, you know, for their well-being. Um, also, in my back room, I made a tribute room, like an indoor garden with um, pictures of Tanisha and her hand and footprints. Her hair, some of her hair I put into a picture frame. I'll show you in a minute. I put like fake grass down and it's literally like a little indoor garden and the girls go in there to remember and think about Tanisha and they absolutely love it. And that's probably the best thing I could have done for them. Um, you know, honour to Tanisha as well 
Thank you once again. I know I keep saying it for all your support and your lovely messages and, you know, your comments. And it really does mean a lot. And my strength comes when I think of Tanisha. She's the one that gives me the strength. And I've had some people say to me, oh, Kelly, you're going to break down soon. You're going to have a breakdown. I'm thinking, like, wow, how dare you? Like, why must I have a breakdown? Because at the end of the day, I've accepted that my daughter's gone. I know I'm never going to see her again. Well, until it's my time. And I've accepted. So it's not like I'm in denial and then one day reality hits you and then you have a breakdown. I, I'm not in denial. I know what's what. But at the same time, I have other children to be strong for. And my eldest son said to me, Mum, like, you're so strong, Mum. And he said, like, the stronger you are, the stronger I am. Bless him. And you can't afford to break down because if you break down... Everything else breaks down around you. And crying in your bed and being depressed and letting everything slide doesn't bring your child back. You know? So if I'm sitting there depressed and whatever else, it's not bringing her back. I've got to find the strength to fight, to fight what happened to her and get justice. And I will continue to fight and get justice until the day I die. And um, I want to make sure as well that this does not happen to any other family. That's a promise. And uh, like I said earlier, this is only the beginning for me. Right guys, this is her tribute room for the girls. Her sisters, they come in here, they absolutely love it. They really do. And her memory just stays alive, you know. And if they want to think about her, they can come in here. The babies, they play with the rabbits. It's so cute, guys. My three-year-old, she just loves looking in the mirror and she talks about Tanisha in there. This is her footprints and her handprints and her hair. This is after she died. This is what I have left of my daughter, guys. That was Tanisha at her prom. Look how beautiful she is. Bless her. Love you, Tanisha.